Cold immersion versus cold showers. What's the differences? Well, in this video, I'll be going over the differences between cold immersion and cold showers. And I'm going to go over the similarities and everything in between. So cold showers. When you take a cold shower, you release this thing called norepinephrine, which boosts your mood and energy levels. It also helps to boost the immune system because it um, makes you produce more white blood cells. Although this effect will be more mild compared to cold immersion, where, where you're in the cold for like five minutes at a time. But yeah, I'll be talking about cold immersion right now. So let's get to it. So cold immersion. Cold immersion is like cold showers 2.0. It has everything that you get from the cold shower and so much more. With cold immersion, uh, if you have head trauma and or, like had a concussion or something, uh, the cold is very beneficial to recover from traumatic brain injuries. Uh, I would consult a physician to talk to you more about this topic but that's one of the many things that cold immersion helps with. Cold immersion helps upregulate cold shock proteins, which are good for preventing muscle wasting. If you got an injury and you cannot work out for a long time and you want to man maintain your muscle mass, I would do cold immersion because cold shock proteins have been found to help prevent uh, muscle wasting from inactivity. Cold immersion will help upregulate your mitochondria so you will um, generate more mitochondria which will lead to better aerobic capacity. This leads back to the head trauma thing. When you increase your mitochondrial density, let's say in your head, it can be very beneficial. Uh, let's just say like people suffering from dementia and stuff like that um, usually cannot uh, generate energy and um, if you somehow improve their ability to taking energy in, it helps a lot. Cold immersion also upregulates, believe it or not, heat shock proteins. And heat shock proteins are good for muscle synthesis. So to build muscle mass and to prevent, uh, also one of the heat shock proteins prevents, uh, helps uh, with uh, rhabdo if you have, but also like if you have rhabdo, then go seek medical attention right away and also talk to your physician. But it, yeah, it helps um, be more resistant to it. Also, when you're exposed to the cold like that, um, your brain uh, produces um, a signal that makes your head produce more synapses synapse grow, uh, to grow back because usually in extreme cold uh, if you're exposed to extreme cold for a long time you actually lose synapses in your head so there's a mechanism inside your body that makes you produce more synapses when you're exposed to the cold one more thing that I will um, say is that if you're working out regularly and uh, you want to do cold immersion I I uh, suggest you don't uh, do it right after your workouts uh, if your goal is to gain um, muscle and recover faster because you're when you go right into the cold immersion uh, your body won't get um, 
the stimulus it needs for it to recover properly uh, by its own means. So if your goal is to recover faster and not um, and grow bigger in size, then I would just suggest you don't do cold immersion right away after a workout. Instead, if you like, go in the sauna and they'll help you more to recover and grow bigger and stronger. But if your goal is to increase your aerobic capacity, then increasing the amount of uh, times you go into the cold after a workout could be beneficial. Um, you have to balance it, obviously, because if you do it every day, then you won't recover properly. But uh, the cold increases mitochondrial density, so then uh, it'll help you improve your cardiovascular endurance uh, during workouts. But yeah, as I said, you just have to um, experiment uh, and see what works best for you. Because as I said, to recover after a workout, you cannot just go into the cold right away every day. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you like the differences and the similarities. I'm sure there's more things that I could have put in the video. So uh, don't take this as everything that that's different or similar about cold showers and cold immersion, but this is a good starting point. And always seek medical advice from a doctor. So anything I said about head trauma, double check it with your doctor and make sure it's it fits what they they've studied and what they recommend I'm not a doctor so that's why but uh, and also if you like this video like it subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you guys next week peace take it slowly this book is dangerous